Welcome back to part two of this Tiger Walk Cycle series. In this video, we're going to go through the IK chest and the IK hips, and maybe do some more spiny stuff to the feet as well. If you're new here, please do subscribe to the channel and go and watch part one where we start out with the reference and the blocking pass. But in this video, we're going to continue on with this cycle. In part one, we did this walk cycle as you can see here now. It's pretty simple with the feet. The tempo is okay, but now we can work on the chest and the hips. Now we have some information on the rig. So you can start off with either one. Um, it depends on what you want to work on. I'm going to start off with the chest because I think it's a little bit more uh, important to the visual sort of appeal of the tiger. So let's find the up and down pose first. I'm going to open up the graph editor now. This is where we start doing our graph editor work. If you're new to the graph editor itself, I would recommend watching um, a tutorial on that. But I've, hopefully everyone here knows what I'm doing in the graph editor. And I'm using stack view for most of my stuff. And the reason why you can't see this box is because I have the sync selection on. And also my colors are different because I've gone to, uh, where is it? Uh, it is, where is it gone? Here, color settings. And you can change your sort of graph editor colors. I've done that so I know that this is always going to be rotations. These three are rotations. These three are translations. Just easier for me to see visually. But I'm just going to look at the translation wire for now. So let's look at our reference and see what's going on. So let's find the contact pose. So this is probably the contact, so nothing really has changed here. I'll go to translate Y again. And let's find this down pose. So let's sync this again, sorry. So let's find this down pose. So I think this at frame three is the down pose of this cycle. So I'm gonna just maybe now exaggerate it a little bit. So I go too far. And we can always bring it back later if you have to. I think that's the down pose there. But smaller. Let's now find this up pose. So the up pose is around about frame 13. So this is I'm looking at this shoulder joint here. I know the shoulders are also moving too, but they do work together. So I think it's okay to sort of follow this point. So that's the up. And that's the down. So it's very subtle. The hips do move more than the chest, at least in this cycle. But that's the down. Let's go in and move this up down the graph editor. And move this up. Oh, sorry, it was frame, what was it? It was frame. Yeah, it was frame 11, sorry. Let's move this back down again. Put a key here, insert key, or just S. And you can move this up. And I think for now, let's go and hit the auto tangent just for now. We can fix this spline as well. Now, the reason why I'm fixing this spline. Because it's a cycle, it's going to continue on forever. But of course, the splining should never be flat. If it was like this, back at default, it's going to come in, slow down, then go fast again, which doesn't make sense. It's a continuous movement. So make sure your first key and your last key, which for me is frame 30, is um, at least not flat. At least makes sense with the splining of your curve. So maybe it pushes up a little bit more. Okay, now what we can do, because it's the same thing repeated, so the up, the up and down happens for each step, we can actually just copy and paste this. So I'm going to select these four keys, Control c and then go to frame 15, make sure you, oh, I missed my mistake, click again, and select this key though, it's important to select it, and then Control v and hit, you can just, <coughs> my voice on, sorry about that. <coughs> we can select this key, and we click Auto Tangent again, just to reset all oh, this one here, sorry, and just reset it down to normal. So now if we fix this as well, there we go. We have a pretty nice repeating cycle. So the down is clearly too exaggerated, which is fine. Because like I said, we want to over animate it first. But now we know it's correct in the timing. I think we can move this up a little bit. Move this up. So look at now again. Okay, that's better, I think. That's not too bad. Let's leave this for now. Let's look at the rotation X. I like doing these two transition Y and X sort of together at the same time because I think they are very, very connected. Now, if you've done a human walk cycle, you'll know exactly how the hips work in this motion. Basically, as you're pushing up, so you're he's pushing up into this up pose, this moment here, his hips are going to be rotated forwards or down. So you're basically imagining your hips are going to be pushing down into the ground because the chest and the upper limbs are kind of dragging up from behind the chest. So basically what we can do is we can set a key on the same pose as the up pose. We can go in, set a key, insert key, 
And I'll exaggerate this for you now to say what I mean. But this is the rotation we want to go this way. All right, it's going up as well. It's basically, as I said, it's coming forward, it's dragging up. So the hips are dragging in time. This is obviously way too much, so we can soften this. And the opposite is, of course, true for the down pose. So go back to the down pose. And I go, is that I'm going to make this really, really big. This is the action you want. And just like we did for the translation uh, Y, you can control C, go to this frame, go to the right frame as well, and then set the curve and control V. And then this curve is broken, so do auto tangent. We can fix the spline here, fix it. And this one, we've got two keys, so delete this one. And there we go. And now if we play this, it's gonna be really, really, really strong. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's make it a lot softer now. So I'm gonna go into um, real work, um, what's the word? Hit one on your keyboard to get to this, this mode. So now what we can do, we can go shift, control, hold them down and right mouse button click in the middle of the curve. So right now it's in the middle here, about 20 for me. I'm gonna scale it all the way down like this, a lot smaller. So look at this now. There we go, it looks, already looks, looks better. But now I think it's a bit too low. So now we can take the whole curve itself, move it up, we should move it down, sorry, and move it maybe closer towards zero, this sort of curve here. So now it's kind of more in the actual location it should be. Cool. Well, it looks okay. That's not too bad. All right, let's go into the translation X now. So this is the side to side motion. So now looking from the front, the way it's going to work is when it's over one leg and one leg's pulling through the passing pose, then the hips are going to shift over to that supporting leg, right? So that's where the extreme is. Basically, you want to find this passing pose, which is going to be here, right? When the basically the, the feet are fully off the ground and this is going to be completely across to the side. Again, I'm going to exaggerate to start off with, then we can tone it down later. Now this time we don't want to control Z and control V because this is only going to happen on one uh, point per step. So now we need to go to the other key, which is probably going to be over here at frame 23 and bring us this side as well. And then this little key again, auto tangent A. And this is what the curve looks like. I'm going to go back to stack view. So I like it in stack view. This is the curve. Again, fix this tangent, bring it down. Bring this up. And then we can see what's going on there. Okay. But again, it's too big. Let's make it smaller. Back into the stack view. And if you want to do some hotkeys or you want to do some actual, um, what's the word? Some actual calculations of how much you want to scale it. Go to the scale box, value scale pivot. Let's put this to 0.8, which is a good starting value. And let's hit apply. Get smaller, maybe hit again. And let's basically keep playing it through till it's still too big, apply. And then one more time. There we go, I think that's about, that's about right. Cool. So now we have this motion of the chest. It's looking better, isn't it? Cool. Okay, let's go to the rotation Y now, which is the easiest one, I think, because it's going to basically be the opposite on both contacts. So this is the contact pose where the left foot or the left hand is fully forward. So this is going to be really, really rotated forward like this, isn't it? So I'm going to, again, I'm going to exaggerate. So this is a value of, let's put this, a value, let's do minus 20 just for fun, minus 20. And then these two together, put this at plus 20, because it's the opposite. Again, you want to, actually this time you don't need to fix the curves because if you see here, the curve naturally is going to be um, flattening out at the top and then going back down. So this actually, this tangent is correct. So now we can look at this and from the front, you can see what's going on. Cool. Again, way too much. Let's go back into the scale box. Well, actually, I have a hotkey here, right? So what I've done is I've taken this, um, this 5.8 and I made it to a hotkey, which I won't explain now because it takes more time up. Basically, I hit this button and it scales it down for me. So look at this. I think a bit more at 0.8. And 1.2 is getting bigger, of course. Okay, for now, I'm going to leave it at that. I might make it smaller later. Cool. Okay. And the last one is the rotation um, Z, which is also pretty simple. Basically, it's the same as the translation X. 
So where this pose is at its highest, this is also going to be at its highest. Delete this key for now. So I'll go to stack view. I'm going to insert a key here. Now, basically, this is going to be quite subtle because the shoulders do most of the work. So um, the way that the clavicle and shoulder works in a cat is they can really push them up and down with the weight. But we don't have to, we don't have the same level of movement. So I can do a little bit right now, but they can really push it out, which means their chest doesn't actually need to spin as much. It can just sort of take the weight and the, the shoulder is what's holding it off the ground. Even so, we need a little bit of side to side movement with this chest. So as it's off the ground, this leg here is going to push up. So it's going to rotate this way like that. Yeah. So it's going to basically, this leg is falling down because of gravity. It's going to take it down. So the same as this curve here. Let's go to this key, put in the key, opposite side. Again, hit these two keys. Let's have a look. Let's do a test. Cool. You see how it looks, but there's way too much, as I said. So let's go back to the normal view. I'm going to scale it down quite a lot. Let's have a look. You can barely move one more up in 1.2 this time, getting it bigger. Cool. So the value I've got here is about minus five, and this is going to be, again, about plus five. Maybe I can make this four and make this maybe minus four. Doesn't, does not have to be even actually being different is better, but just for the sake of this tutorial, make it the same. Normally having variety in your contact poses is better because they never walk identically, but yeah. Okay, cool. I think for now we can leave that chest as it is. Um, let's go on to the back pose. This is kind of the same, but just offset, but this is actually going to be leading the action. Okay, yeah, let's start with the transit Y. So. Let's find this pose for the white. So that is about the same tempo. So this is the passing pose. I think this is the up pose, right? Which is the frame seven. So I'm going to put a key in here and I bring this up. Let me do it actually do it in the graph this time. So do it in the viewport, sorry. So about here. I want to make sure the legs doesn't get too broken. I will polish them again later, the legs, but even so. And because this is the up pose, we can pretty much infer but the down pose is about frame two, maybe frame one even. Maybe frame, let's have a look. I think frame one actually. No, actually frame 13, frame 13. So actually what I'm gonna do is I think, I think actually frame five is the up pose. So I'm gonna shift this key back a little bit and go to frame 12, maybe. Yeah, frame 11. Make this the um, the thingy pose, the down pose. So if I just just to compare, see what happens. Look at these two together. Yeah. So basically, it's kind of symmetrical, but how it's opposite. So this is basically the down pose at frame um, frame three, the down pose of the chest. But then the up pose of the hips is at frame five, and the up pose is about frame eleven. So here you can see very clearly that it's about five or six frame offset of these two curves. So the hips go first, then five or six frames later, the same thing happens in the chest. I'm like I said, I'm gonna copy and paste, so control C, go to frame 15, select the key, control V, and make sure this is tangented. And this time we do need to fix this, so I'm gonna delete that key and make it do like that. This one as well, do like, oh, sometimes it doesn't work, do like that. There we go. And that should be fine. Let's look at this now. So he has offset. Cool. Okay, let's work on the uh, rotation X again. So let's go back to stack view. And we can probably just, just select this one for now. This should be quite simple to see in the graph editor. So just like we have for the other pose, let's look for this up pose. So this is the... Up pose is about here, isn't it? Let's go back and do it together again. Yeah, up pose is here. So let's select this again. And like I said before, it's going to be dragging. So this is going to be uh, coming down like this, dragging. That's probably too much, but um, you can change it later. Go in here again. I can bring this down. And let's uh, fix this tangent. And let's control C. 
So that's curve, control V. So yeah, we have this translation Y and this rotation X. Let's look at it again and make sure you fix the tangent, like I said. Make it all smooth. And it should look pretty good now. Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay. We will animate this thing later, but this thing in the middle, which is a really good controller. We will animate this in the, in the middle, but later on. It will give us some really nice deformations. Okay, let's work on the rotation. Uh, let's do the rotation. Oh, no, the translations. There, this one. Okay, just like we did for the other body, we've got to find the extremes. So this is probably the passing. Yeah, this is the passing. So I set a key on frame six. No, yeah, frame five, frame five. And I bring it across this way. Not too much, as I said, because um, it's got quite a wide stance and the hips are also supporting it. So I don't need to worry about too much, but do bring it across so it feels balanced like that. And then the next one is about five frames after the contact. Let's go to frame 20. Yep, the opposite. And that should be fairly symmetrical. Maybe this is too big. Maybe one frame later. No, that was fine before. But make sure you fix the tangents though, of course. Let's bring this down. And then bring this up. Cool. Maybe this one here actually can be slightly higher up. Just to have a slightly smoother curve and bring these two down a tiny bit. Just to have it slightly smoother. There we go. Can I do this now? Okay. Right, that is pretty big. And I think actually my translations in the feet, they are too wide. So I think my feet are too wide, but I am going to leave it for now because I want to make sure it um, makes sense. It looks a bit, what's the word here? It's a little bit strange in the feet, but don't worry, we'll get to the feet again later. Okay, let's work on the rotation Y. It already has keys for some reason, let's delete these. Okay, so we want to make sure that at the stretch pose, which is this pose frame, 11 it's the most rotated this way there we go and then we also want it to have the opposite so that's about four frames behind the contacts about there there we go i have the opposite kind of thing and delete this and make sure these are nice and smooth cool bring this one back i miscounted again and we should if i just check this out Okay, I think these are all very over animated, which is fine because you can fix these. So I'm actually going to fix this now because this is annoying me. So this translation X in the, the hips is too big. Let's go down here. I'm going to scale it down by 0.8 a few times. And same with the rotation Y. Select this as well. And I think this is too, it's too much. I'm going to bring this back a little bit down there. That's a bit better. I'm trying to make a nicer curve. Cool. Okay, I'm going to change his feet now because they're annoying me. So this is our currently at, let's go to this curve, zero. So that's obviously not, that's too wide. Let's bring this in. And then it's going to be planted way too wide. Let's bring this into about there, which is going to be minus 10, it's two minus 10 in the viewport. So in the channel box. And same here, it's a minus 10 here. The feet will have some sway when they're going through the air. But for now, let's keep it all at minus 10. Actually, I'm going to select everything. I'm going to set this all to minus 10. That's 10. There we go. And then this one here, set this all together. So all of this, put this to plus 10. It's good, it's the opposite, right? Plus 10. Cool. So look at this now. Should be a little bit more natural. There we go. Already feels a bit better. Cool. Right. This is meant to be the hips video, so I'll do the hips. So let's look at the rotation of the Z axis. So this is again, similar to the front port. When the foot's off the ground at this passing pose, which is at frame five, it's gonna push up on the opposite legs. It's gonna push this way, like that. It's gonna push up the way. Again, way too much, but that's okay for now. We'll just leave it like that. I'm gonna delete this frame 11 key. And I'm gonna delete this frame 26 key as well. And let's go to the opposite one, which is about frame 21. And bring this up. What, what was this value? This is minus four. So this is minus ten for now, just, just to test it out. And put this at plus ten. Put this to uh, auto tangent. And I'm going to bring this and this uh, down a little bit. 
and let's make this there and bring this up, up a little bit to make it a slightly smooth curve. Yeah, and I'm also going to bring this to frame, frame 30. Cool. So we just look at the chest and hips together by themselves. Try and ignore the weird feet. I should kind of got the, the the good workings of a cycle right there. I'm just checking we haven't missed out a curve. Of course, we're not doing this one because we're not going forward. Cool. Okay. So let's just quickly animate this, this curve in the center here. So I'm going to quickly show you an image of the cycle so you see what's going on. So this picture from Rich Williams is the survival animators kit, or the animators survival kit, sorry, is a really good starting point for working out to do quadrupeds. This is the dog, of course, but they have a very similar gait and a very similar walk pattern. And we can look at this image at the top right here to see what I'm talking about. So basically the spine is going to have this sort of rotation back and forth, which goes to neutral, bent, neutral, bent. And we can work this out very quickly by looking at the feet. So when the feet on one side are clumped together, they're going to be pushed this way, and the other side they're going to be spread out, and then vice versa. Let's try and make this pose quickly with our things. So we have this already kind of set up. Let's just work on it a little bit more with our translation Ys. So let's go and set these Y curves. All right, this one and this one. I'm going to go to Y. Cool. So we know that um, when the feet are together, which is not, not this pose, it's going to be like there, about this pose here. Let's kind of work on the pose a little bit more. So I think this pose, we can bring this down a little bit. So this can be a bit more twisted this way. Cool. And this one here. Bring it up a little bit. There we go. And now we can work on this pose here by using this controller, making it a little bit less bulgy. So right now it's a bit sort of like pushed out this way. We can, what we can do, we can bring this in a little bit just to create a slightly nicer shape. Let me set a gear from 21. And we can also maybe add some rotations in here to try and get a nicer spline curve and rotation X. And maybe because it's going to rotate this way with the feet coming in, I'm going to rotate this way down. It's going to push out the belly. This belly here is going to push out a little bit more. It's like squeezing itself out like an ab curl on the side. Then we can take this key to frame 21 and then go to about frame, I guess, frame six or so and do the kind of opposite pose. So then let's go the other way. Let's bring this one down. Bring this one down, bring this one up, bring this one down, and bring this one up. Very subtle. And then put this all together and put D. And then we can check these curves. So these are all going to be the wrong spline. Let's just check this first if it looks good. Cool. They've got a bit of movement in the chest now. So now with that simple movement, the belly and everything feels a bit more like squash and stretchy. And we can always make this sort of polished later on if we need to finish it, but right now actually it's pretty good as it is. Cool. Right, I think that's that's kind of part two done. So in part three, we're going to go over the shoulders and go back to the feet again. Hopefully get that sort of sort of on lockdown. But please do subscribe and like this video. I've been really trying to up my quality with these videos and tutorials. If this is useful or we have any other tutorials you want me to make for you, please do leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in part three.